Welcome back. Today we are going to look at the the sidebar of a website and the footer of a website. And there's some really exciting changes that have been going on in design lately. We've been static for for years in terms of what a web page looks like. You know, if there's a sidebar, it, it usually contains uh, some links to other articles or some secondary information to the main web page. So, for example, here is a web page about um, design technology. It's a blog, and uh, they have the main article here in the center. Uh, we have our call to action over here on the sidebar. This is sometimes a good location for that call to action right here at the top on the sidebar. And then we look and we kind of go through and we can see down here on the f on the side is listed all of the the most recent articles uh, that this blog has put out and other things that you might want to look at. And then the list kind of stops. There's it's it's on that. F I mean, it's a little bit beyond the, the fold, but it does go down to. Uh, not too much further down, and I would say it's still kind of on the front page, so to speak. And then we can see all of our the rest of that first article. Also on the sidebar, this is a, a smaller sidebar over here. This includes all of their social media links, and you'll notice that it's it stays the whole time. That's a really good use of a sidebar. That as I scroll down, that information is always present for people to click on it. So it's still secondary, but it's always there. So it, it's still really important. And people read left to right. So having it on the left hand side does make a difference versus having it on the right hand side. If we also want to dive all the way down to the footer and we can see uh, the footer is important. It gives some basic information like copyright information and tells you, um, you know, who gets you back to the main site, gets you back at the top. Sometimes the social media links are put down here. Some li other links like a site map is put down here. CNN does that. You know, I often find it difficult on CNN to get to the technology news. It's not linked right at the top. But if I go all the way down to the bottom in the footer, actually I'll show you that real quick. If we go back to that. If I scroll all the way down to the footer, you can see at the bottom here, I have all of the links to every single news article section that I would be interested in. And here's tech, but notice at the top in that header bar, there is no link to tech. I can't get to technology right away. That's not one of their main links. I'm not sure why, it's just not up there at the top. So for me, I almost immediately scroll down to the bottom and look at the business section and click on tech. I guess I could click on business. And then again, it opens up to a subsection to get to tech. So I, for me, I think it's easier if I just go and scroll down and take use of that footer at the bottom and, and use that. And notice you also have the same kind of thing. Here they put the social media at the bottom on the footer. And then they have some other important notifications for people. Uh, not urgent for people to look at, but if you're looking for information about a website, more of that technical detail about a website, that's going to be at the very bottom in the footer. That's what goes there. Copyright information, here terms of use, privacy policies, don't sell my personal information, ad choices, all that kind of interesting stuff. They throw the CNN store down there in case you're interested. And of course the site map, you know, which is kind of where we're at now. It shows you where everything is. You know, this is really interesting sometimes to go and take a look at that kind of stuff. So let's look at another example of our sidebar. Here's a video game website, um, Engage It. And notice that their sidebar, again, um, is just another article, you know, things that you should be looking at. And they have two sidebars, one on the left, one on the right. They chose to put their article lists on the left. And then this kind of looks like the, the feature article, so to speak, the article um, that they really, really want to get to. Even though they list this as featured articles and they include a picture, this kind of seems pretty important. There's an official Minecraft gaming chair uh, that sounds like it might be an important thing for people to look at that, of course, we have our main area, our feature area that has our main article. And if, again, we scroll all the way down past all of our stuff, we can see, hey, look, 
our footer again has that kind of important information website kind of map guide if you want to dive in and then of course our social media down here at the bottom for people to click and subscribe and our copyright information and then way way down at the bottom the kind of the fine print terms of service and privacy and all that kind of fun stuff is always at the bottom of our website let's look at a computer site uh, this is for wordpress a wordpress guide this is again a, a traditional kind of sidebar where you have links to articles and other kinds of secondary information uh, here they have help articles useful wordpress guidelines um, guides i should say and then again at our footer we have some information you know kind of a mission statement and our site links again and then our copyright and some information about who manages all of this and they have some neat little advertisements down here of where they were featured kind of letting you know that they've been they're important and they tell you you know we're important it justifies why we should be here on the internet and then we have of course our feature area here in the center um, notice the sidebar in this case is kind of interesting that the sidebar is almost as big as the feature area and that kind of leads me to the next kind of design choice that people are starting to move towards. Uh, if we look at this, this is the Honda website. And you'll notice as we scroll through this, there is no sidebar, nowhere. Sidebars are not a must. You don't have to have a sidebar. Here they have their links kind of just everywhere. It's all everywhere. And I believe that some of this has to do with the devices we're now using to read the internet. Many of the devices are tablets and phones and sidebars on tablets and phones don't work. You know, you have a limited screen space. So putting a sidebar on a limited screen space already, just it just doesn't work. So when designers are designing their websites, they do have a, a, a version of their website that shows up differently on your phone or on your tablet versus on a computer. We're looking on a computer right now. But it looks like Honda has kind of said, we want everyone to have a very similar experience. So when you're on your tablet or on your phone or on the computer, it should be a similar kind of experience. So this is a really kind of big idea in the way we look at design. And it's a decision as a designer you have to make. You know, do you want a different experience on a computer versus an experience on a phone or a tablet? Or are you looking for uh, the same kind of experience for everybody throughout? And that's a decision you have to make as a designer. So let's take a look at another example. Here's another example of that where they kind of go midway, right? They have this feature area call to action about um, some, some video game that they want you to look at. And that's really interesting. And then we get to our news stories, but they have these this sidebar and this sidebar this time is comments. You know, it's like a Twitter feed or it's a comment feed. And that's another common thing that people put on your sidebar is uh, feedback or comments to see more information about the website and engages the user in that, oh, if I put a, a comment or I put something on Twitter about this, then I might show up on the website. You know, that's uh, good user engagement and will encourage users to come back and actually leave comments so they can see their information show up on the website because people love to talk. They love to share their information on the internet in some form of social media. So this is definitely a, a user reward, so to speak, that the user gets a reward for interacting with the website. Uh, here's uh, Unilever, Vaseline company. Uh, you can see that the first thing that you get to when you pop in here is an ad. Uh, I'm going to skip the ad. But we again, we don't have a sidebar. They have eliminated the sidebar totally out of this design. It is all images and links and pictures. There is no sidebar. We have our footer. That has stayed the same. We still have our social media. We still have our links to our website. We still have our copyright information. So that kind of information in the footer stays the same. The main difference between these two different layouts, between um, our kind of formal sidebar that we see, right, and you know something like Honda where there is no sidebar, 
is what are they designing for? Are they designing for people who usually use the computer or people who use their tablets? Or are they designing to make sure everybody has the same experience? Or do they want a different experience on the computer? Do they want to encourage people to go to the computer? Here's another one, a good example, uh, DrupalCon. Um, this is a, about a conference. Again, no sidebar whatsoever listed here, but let's look down here at the footer to see if there's some consistency with that. And yes, of course, there is our social media down here at the bottom, our copyright information and who's our sponsors and some important information here. They don't really have a sitemap, but um, that's not necessarily required, uh, if you're, especially if you're not a new site and you just have one call to action, which in this case is to just go to DrupalCon and Portland um, and sign up for that and register. And if you're coming to this site, more than likely, you know uh, why you're coming. You know, there's, there's not a uh, question of, of why you would not be visiting this site. So in general, some things that fit well inside of a sidebar, um, Advertising space is a, is a good thing to put inside of a sidebar. It's off to the side. You sell ads. Um, skyscrapers and big boxes, vertical boxes, fit well into sidebars. Uh, the design should blend in with the look of the rest of the page. It shouldn't be obvious that this is just ads sitting on the right, um, or it shouldn't be obvious that this is just a information page. Uh, make sure they don't interfere with the above the fold idea that you know it's not distracting and taking away from the most important information that you have and it should not be outdated it should be current so those comments those twitter feeds uh, constantly updating uh, it shouldn't be an ad for something that doesn't exist anymore that you can't buy anymore it, and it should be an ad for something that people want and this is where those analytics come in uh, when you're looking at a website. Sometimes the computer analytics will know which things you're looking at. You ever been in an experience where you've been talking about something and you're like, oh my gosh, Google's listening to me or Amazon's listening to me. And they put ads all of a sudden for the things that you are interested in. And, and they're showing up on the sidebars of the websites that you're looking at. That's really important for the designers to pay attention to and how that analytic works and ties into their web page. So that is all for our lesson today. I hope you enjoyed it and learned a lot. I'll see you next time.